seriously, it is a dream to be able to dive and gather data and do science and be in the ocean and travel some of the most remote reefs. So yeah, learn about it now. To be completely honest with you, Pablo has the coolest job in the world. Not only is he underwater videographer, but he also gets to count fish gather data and get paid to do it. In this video, we talk about all things Eye on the Reef, what it is, how you can get involved, and what we're doing to collect data to help save the Great Barrier Reef. Hi, Kat. So we are really lucky to be at the moment at the beautiful Wheat Sandy Islands. We are just hiding here uh, behind uh, Hook Island, and we've been exploring several locations mm -hmm. and we've been uh, learning about what Eye on the Reef means and how people can get involved. <laughs> it's a really cool fun program uh, that is run by the uh, Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority and goes down from Lady Island all the way almost to Papua New Guinea. Different tourism operators, jodies, fishermen, anyone interested on the reef going from researchers, like you say, all the types of citizen science is kind of the core program on the entire Great Barrier Reef to collect data about how is the health of the reef, send that back to the authorities, then they get that information and they can choose where to invest the resources to look after the reef. Okay, so this is kind of just giving us an idea, allowing us to learn about trends that yeah. are happening, seeing if the coral bleaching events are as dire as they were saying, how much climate is impacting the reef and which areas are the healthiest. Because we've been diving and it's been beautiful. I mean, and I've even myself been really, really impressed of how the good sun is looking. Absolutely, we hit some spots that we thought they're gonna be good, yeah, but they were mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. There are different levels on the Eye on the Wraith um, program, and the first one is an app that you can use in your smartphone. And with this app, you can see how the reef is. Uh, color coded mm -hmm. and depends on the color, there are different levels of protections. Yeah. So, where we are at the moment is blue, there's yellow, there's greens, and pink. So, pink is research station, green yeah. is not taking suns or marine parks, yellow is uh, some type of uh, fishing is allowed, but not much, and blue is allowed to do type of a commercial fishing and recreational fishing. Okay. Are commercial fishermen allowed in the yellow zones? No, they're not. Okay, so it's just some recreational fishing is allowed. Yeah, here so the this app tells you where you can go, where mm -hmm. you cannot go to do different types of activities, and it's really well explained. So when people visit the marine park, actually does, they do the right thing because they get the information and it's a really simple app. And you can use it also as a Google map because it works really well, and you can know where you go and mark all your spots. But the cool part of this app is that you can do sightings. The coolest app that we have on the Marine Park is the Instagram of the Marine Park. <laughs> and if you see something really cool like a manta ray or a shark or a turtle, you can do sightings, give you information about them, mm -hmm. and you can tell where you saw it, send that pretty much straight away to the Marine Park. And if you don't have any internet, don't, doesn't matter. You don't need internet to run this app. Also, this app is really well used from uh, uh, the authorities to be able mm -hmm. to do warning sightings about incidents like coral stress, spawning, something that is really cool, and also outbreaks of crown of thorns, sea stars, any injured animal. Mm -hmm. So this goes straight away to the people that manage the marine park and they can take quick actions to look after those animals. So that's level one. We have an app. We can put in incidents, track animals, things like that. Yeah. So what's level two then? Level two uh, was created to kind of have a snapshot of how is the health of the reef in a particular area. Like we did today, we got in the water, yeah. we got to see the reef, it was amazing. Uh, we took videos and photos of us, and then you get out of the water, or in the water if you get this really cool underwater uh, slides, and you can see in a 10 minutes trunk set what you got to see. And there are, uh, just record the animals. Yep. Sea cucumbers, clams, clownfish, grazing herbivores, marigrass, turtle sharks, uh, and coral trouts, and also crown of thrones sea stars. So these ones are what we call keystone species. Mm -hmm. The more you find, the healthier the reef is. The so if you're a high school teacher or want to have this involved in your high school, you can also reach out to Eye on the Reef and I think they provide the training and everything. Background, there's online training and then when we get in the water, mm -hmm. obviously we take them, we explain them everything before they, they get there. And after the trunk set, I'm finding all the iconic species, mm -hmm. there is a 360 trunk set to just to analyze 
how is the health of the reef in one particular spot and see if we find any of the impacts that we are used to see. It, like any other ecosystem, it's not gonna be 100% healthy. Yeah. We'll have sections that have coral rubble, sections that have sand. The reef is patchy, so we cannot expect to see 100% coral cover everywhere. Yeah. And also a few animals that can have some predation, like crown of thorn, sea stars, and the teeny tiny snails called drupella snails. Drupella. That's the ones you like, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Our camera woman is an expert at drupella identification, hunting, yeah. removal. Yeah. What do you do well, with them? We just get them out of water and you can even freeze them and put them in fresh water and when they die, just put them back into the ocean. Okay. It's a shell and animals can eat it. Mm -hmm. uh, with crown of from sea stars, we can inject uh, vinegar mm -hmm. or another new product called BioSalt. The, the starfish start to struggle with the pH of the body mm -hmm. and die through starvation. Okay. So the animals eat it and become part of the food source. So we don't eliminate these animals from the habitat. Yeah. They are, they are endemic from this area. At least yeah. they are able to control the population of them. Ad break, get yourself a Reef Rebellion t-shirt where 10% of proceeds goes to Reef Restoration Foundation up in Cairns. All made by me, 100% organic cotton. Do it. That was level two, mm -hmm. so a little bit of training there, you're there guiding them, a snapshot of the reef. What's mm -hmm. the next one? The next one is uh, Traversing Weekly, and like the name suggests, we do it every week, and mm -hmm. we do it in the same location. Mm -hmm. It's a trunk set, around 200 meters, 150 meters, mm -hmm. and we have a beginning and ending point, and we do know the reef like the back of our hand. Yep. We go to the same locations every single week, and nobody else in the entire planet collects mm -hmm. as much data as the Marine Park Authority mm -hmm. through this program. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You mind getting to know your reef so well mm -hmm. that every single week you send the information of how the reef is looking, and then you can see the trunk sets and the trends during the years, if yeah. the reef is improving, decreasing, or changing in different shape of manner. Mm -hmm. And you need a online training for this, and also a in-water training with uh, the Marine Park Authority, which is really cool fun. We just go out, we assess that everyone has similar idea about how the reef looks like, okay. and check if everyone is getting into yeah, the so same. Yeah, so it's standardized it's in standardized, a way. Standardized, absolutely. Cool. Well, the, I'll have to get onto that one and actually do the training. We so will can... link you in with that. <laughs> Excellent. The last one that when you get to do all of this and you get pretty good at it, yeah, it's called Reef Health and Impact. And it's, this is what AIMS use. This is what the Australian Institute of Marine Science does. So the big guns, the ones that they know everything about the reef, use this and many people get started with quicklies and rapids and move mm -hmm. all the way to reef surveys. At the moment we have 23 operators doing the Tourism Protection Initiative, mm -hmm. which uh, we are subsidized by the government to collect this data and report back to them. So how cool is that that we go to the reef and we actually get paid to do surveys? It's possible, guys. So there are jobs in marine conservation, marine science, marine biology, and... This is just going on the water, collect the data, go back home, punch the data, report it back to the reef. And the beautiful part of this that allowed us to explore some sections of the reef, especially if you are working in Australia, if you're working on the Great Barrier Reef, uh, I highly encourage you to get involved with this because it's another skill that you get. People will reach out to you to yeah. give you better jobs and you can move across. The amount of places that I managed to visit because of the Marine Park Authority, amazing locations that probably I will never ever have a chance to visit if it's not because of these guys. Uh, yeah, I'm sold. <laughs>